the things that people say that that like exile us mm. from mm. feeling understood or loved mm. or held in any mm. way you've had some strong feelings about the phrase I can't possibly imagine, mm. in which maybe they don't want to imagine. Yeah, but well, that's, I mean, exile is a really interesting word to say, like, when, because when you are grieving in the beginning, but you do feel exiled from normal life, don't you? And I walked around this kitchen with my, you know, my five kids and my husband were all here, and they were sad, they were really, really, really sad, but it, but, but they weren't, hadn't lost their sister who they'd lived with through everything. And so yes. the thing that I felt, so I felt that in here, amongst the people who loved me and held me the most, when you go outside and then have to go to Tesco's yes. or go in to do something, it's as though, you know, the world is just carrying on in the most offensively blithe, yes. uncaring way. And you are in a place of exile. And I describe it as like drinking, it's as though you've taken some poison or you've got an awful secret that you yes. don't want to share with anybody else. You don't want to completely ruin their day as well in the same way that it's yes. ruining your day. And um, and yes. the place that is a that's the, the sort of loneliness of yes. grief. I think is a real shock, and that's why these kind of conversations yeah. are really really important to remind yeah. us that the grief that we share is a common experience. And I and I think yeah. um, Nick Cave wrote something recently about you know his kind of diabolical grief over the death of his teenage son. There was something really extraordinary. He said about understanding that what he was experiencing, which felt so peculiar to him and so personal and so much worse than anything anybody had experienced, was a normal grief that many, many thousands and you know people yes. were experiencing at the same time. And that way of trying to find a point of connection with other people. So when people say to you, I cannot begin to understand how you're feeling, they're saying, I can't begin to understand how you're feeling, over there in your pain, and I want you to stay over there in your mm -hmm. pain. And don't let your pain come flooding into my life, which I'm, right. the, you know, I'm holding in some way. And I think that it's so important when you yes. meet people, when they're grieving, when they're bereaved, or even just in life, yeah. you, don't have, you don't have to be in pain to do this, is to, is to try and connect. But, but when somebody has lost somebody they love, don't say, I can't imagine, or even worse, was like, oh, I couldn't cope without my sister. No. You know, as though, oh, I, I, can, I can cope fine without That's my right. sister. <laughs> it's okay, right. and this is what it looks like, you yeah. know. Because I'm not, because actually what I was feeling was that I'm not coping without my sister. And, um, and yet, you, you know, we have to, you have to, yes. because the extraordinary thing is, is that the beautiful, magnificent, appalling, devastating yes. life continues yes you know and that fact that rolling forward of time yeah. and needs and life is is so grotesque and yes it is so amazing yes. and it's so extraordinary yes.